it is Friday the 13th, so we're hoping that that we're all clear and we don't have any issues on this open line Friday. I, I don't know what it's like for, for Friday the 13th if it's a bad omen in Germany, but over here, Tobias, it, it's a bad thing. So uh, maybe if the lights go out or if we lose internet, that would be an issue. Other than that, I think that you guys are going to carry me throughout this. Uh, my name is Josh Benoit. I'm in marketing at ePlan. Uh, here in the States. This is our webcast series called Open Line Friday. This is being recorded. So if you um, don't get a chance to watch this whole thing, then we will have this recording available to you in the next few days so that you can check it out on YouTube. It's part of our on-demand services that we have here. And what we want to do is want to interact with you. That's why it's called Open Line Friday is that you have questions. We want the we want to hear what the questions are. If you want to raise your hand, if you want to leave your questions in the chat, we love to talk to you and get those questions answered. In fact, our next uh, Open Line Friday that happens on February 3rd is all about the questions that you've had in 2022. But we'll talk about that later. Uh, before we get into anything else, we got to talk about our topic this time. And uh, it's smart wiring and smart mounting. This has been huge for us in the past uh, since platform 2023 came out and Tobias Kratz. He's our business owner coming to us from Germany, where it's seven hours later over here in, in Texas. It's uh, noon. Uh, Pat, it's one o'clock for you, but Tobias, it's already your weekend, buddy. It feels like weekend, but I'm happy <laughs> to be here today. <laughs> yeah, so let me let me ask you, uh, being over there, do, do you feel like working after hours that you should get a little hazard pay? Well, not hazard pay, but a little extra pay because look, you're doing overtime. This is in, this is, you could be drinking a beer right now. <laughs> but Josh, imagine like speaking about smart mounting, smart wiring, so much fun. Doesn't feel like extra hours. So you will see in a couple of minutes. That's a company man for you, Pat. So uh, Tobias, tell us a little bit about yourself. How long you've been with ePlan and, and, and what exactly you do as a, ben, a business owner in, in at HQ? Yeah, I'm with ePlan now for two years as a business owner, so market-oriented product manager for our downstream solutions. And as downstream, we define everything that comes after the engineering. So if we speak about the production, the operation, the service and maintenance uh, topics and solutions. And uh, yeah, in this role, I'm also responsible for smart buying and smart mounting our solutions in the production we will talk about today. And uh, also if you our cloud viewing and reviewing solution for your project documentation. And um, yeah, I'm privacy worked for a component manufacturer. So I basically lose a little bit both worlds, the manufacturing world and the component world. And yeah, happy to talk about the production today. So it's funny because I feel like you're the you're like a celebrity for ePlan because you did a video series for uh, smart mounting and whenever we I think that we had the kickoff for platform 2023 what about four or five months ago and you were in the video and everybody was like yeah like that's that's the dude right there that's a celebrity for ePlan. Yeah, the video was a lot of fun there we was in the innovation center of the tile where we show all the production solutions and it was a great day yeah, doing a live demonstration also about smart mounting and how everything interacts really great into each other as a value chain. And that, yeah, the virtual solutions are also uh, all greatly connected to our software and how it work all in all in the end. Well, joining us today, helping us out on this side here in the States is Pat Muth. Pat is with ePlan and, and you're uh, an account manager. Uh, you're on the East Coast, right? Yeah, so I'm out of the Raleigh area, and uh, okay. I've been with with ePlan going on my sixth year now. Uh, prior to that, I'm originally from the Midwest, so I'm now an East Coast resident uh, and have been for uh, maybe close to 20 years now. Um, prior to that, I've worked for a variety of software automation companies, um, either in technical sales or in sales directly, and so you know, with regards to what you're going to see today from uh, Tobias is is other vertical markets 
uh, have already adopted, you know, the digital prototype, the digital twin uh, a long time ago, because the financial impacts of errors um, going on into manufacturing were much greater. Today, that's starting to, um, or that is the case in the controls automation field. And so, you know, the amount of time, the small amount of time it takes to create the digital twin of your control system, uh, what you're going to see today is just one of the many benefits that you can drive out of out of that twin in your controls automation process, all the way into uh, the manufacturing of the product, as well as down the you know, even further as you get into maintenance and sustainability. So there is an intense amount of value uh, for that little amount of upfront effort to create that digital twin. And Tobias is going to show you a lot of cool stuff that, that will help you on the shop floor. Now, it is the first webcast of 2023. I don't know if you guys know that. This is my first it's one it. this year. And we haven't talked about resolutions a whole lot. For for my resolutions, let, I want I want to find out what your resolutions are. I mean, bes oh, besides so. the obvious, besides the obvious for me. So so my family, I'm, my family, like even my extended family, we're all we are all German, and so we try to do the dry January. <laughs> and we've got some people that have already tapped out, or at least going with the new term this year, damp January. <laughs> okay. You know, kind of, sort of, sort of yeah. dry, sort of not. <laughs> My wife asked if I, if we could do that. She said it last weekend. It was, it was Saturday during the day. She said, hey, should we do dry January? Do you want to do that? And I said, sure, but we we already drank last weekend. She's like, yeah, but you know, it'll be dry January from from say, you know, that point in time, January second through the rest. And then she went to get her nails done with a friend, and she came back. She's like, I already I already gave up. No dry January. So it didn't with take her very family, long to tap like, out. Okay, you got to do an entire. Then you just bleed into February. You know, <laughs> the way I'm going, I'll be in the March at least. <laughs> what about you, Tobias? Do you have any any goals related to having a, a New Year's resolution? Oh, not really. We have something even crazier than the dry January. We have the beach January. That means you stay the whole uh, January uh, region. So no meat. Oh, <laughs> wow. It's not falling from the trees. So a lot of people are doing it over here. It's like, I think, the next level. <laughs> Wow, that's interesting, actually. I don't know if I could go to whole meal with vegan doing a whole month of it. I, wow, it's small steps, little steps. For me, besides the obvious, I, I want to have a better line of communication this year. Better communication for 2023. That's what I'm looking forward to because 2023 is going to be awesome. I'm looking forward to this year is going to be the best ever for ePlan here in the States and over in Germany. So let's kind of launch into this. We got our our experts here that know a whole lot more about this than I do. So let's talk about smart wiring and smart mounting. So Tobias, I know that you have something prepared, so I kind of let you take it away. Yeah, we'll kick off with a few slides and then we will also jump into the application that I can really show the benefit and the value of the solution, give a little demonstration on this. And uh, yeah, we have all the time for questions, so feel free to put them to the chat or ask them directly. Hope you see my screen now. Yes, we do. There are some slides coming as well. Okay. So yeah, today we are talking about the optimization of the control cabinet production and yeah, really to use the digital twin in the production and for the complete value chain. And um, therefore we will first take a look at the value chain and yeah, the panel construction and the potentials we have here to optimize today. And then, as I said, we will jump into the live demonstration of smart mounting and smart wiring. 
uh, to really show yourself how the solution assists the workers on the shop floor directly, how they get all the information and where you can save some efforts for the engineering as well. So to start with, we first take a look at the integrated value chain. And so starting from the engineering, going over to the, to the supply uh, of all the components and to the manufacturing and the operation and the service and maintenance and in the end. And uh, yeah, as I said, today uh, we are focused on the manufacturing um, and the production of the panels, really starting here with the yeah, cutting of all the uh, materials like the DIN rails, uh, like the cable ducts and so on. Then we have the panel modifications where we uh, are yeah, offering a lot of great solutions combined with Zutal as well, like uh, automated panel modification with the Pepperex. Um, and then we have tools for terminal strip assembly, um, for the mechanical installation, so mounting all the um, yeah, mechanical and electronical parts. That's where we will especially speak about today with smart mounting, um, also the labeling of the devices, and then in the end, the wiring with the split and the wire fabrication, which can also be done completely automatically with, for example, the wire terminal coming by Rital. And here we'll also show how great this is integrated into smart, uh, the smart wiring world. Uh, then we're coming to the smart wiring, where the second topic we will dive in deep today, uh, and in the end, the testing of the panel. But uh, yeah, to get all the information for the manufacturing and all the solutions I just talked about, um, we take a quick look back to the engineering, because uh, it all starts here in the engineering when we create uh, the good digital twin of the panel, uh, which is really crucial for the optimization of the production uh, later on. And um, yeah, the, the time you're resting here in the engineering effort is really paying off when it comes to the manufacturing because they use it, then saves a lot of time due to reusing this digital twin for all the different steps uh, in the manufacturing. So let's take a look at um, yeah, the current panel production and um, yeah, all the communication between the engineering and the production today. And yeah, the pains we are seeing today here. Therefore, we had a big interview series here in Europe um, with a lot of panel builders, but also uh, OEMs um, yeah, to discuss about what um, pains they currently see here. And uh, what mentioned the most was yeah, a high time pressure during the production to uh, have everything ready in time. The deadlines are shorter and shorter uh, to be yeah, economically uh, good. And uh, that's why you really, really need to be as fast as possible in the panel production. Uh, badly, this is currently compared, um, yeah, uh, combine, uh, combined with a lack of skilled workers for the panel production. So finding here good stuff is really, really difficult. I know, don't know, George, how is it for you in the US? Here it's really a big topic with the lack of skilled workers. Yeah, it is a big topic. In fact, I'm, I'm glad you mentioned that because we have Chris Lausch that's going to be joining us in probably about a month and a half to, to talk about this because this has been something that's it's not recent. It's been over what the past two years that we've run into this issue. So we want to address this and, and talk about how we have solutions for it. So, yeah, it, it's an important topic for sure. Yeah, there I will show uh, how smart mounting smart wiring can help you here as well to get your workers for the production. And um, yeah, another uh, big pain is uh, the high efforts we have currently in the engineering. Uh, so. For all the production uh, preparation, creating different model views, creating uh, connection lists, creating dimension diagrams, and so on, uh, engineering work is currently um, yeah, needed, and this is all time by highly paid people. Uh, so it's um, important uh, to yeah, shift this production preparation to a more automated uh, process to give the engineering the time uh, to work on the new production uh, documentation for the next project. And uh, even with this 
great model views and all the different exports created. There's a lot of uh, uncertainties left and misunderstandings in the communication. Why, yeah, there are some questions back from the engineering, uh, from the production needed and some communication needed between the engineering and the production. But especially this communication is today really difficult as uh, the engineering and the production is at least located in different buildings, but a lot mm -hmm. in a lot of cases, so it's even different companies. So if you're working with the external um, panel production, um, you don't have this direct communication between the production worker um, and the engineer who created the production documentation. And uh, yeah, last but really big point was also the change process. Uh, especially late changes during the production that really mess up uh, the complete uh, production workflow and um, yeah, extend the production time uh, a lot. And uh, yeah, our goal is to overcome those pains and that everybody can be smart with our solutions. So with our smart um, yeah, production collection, um, we have an infrastructure for uh, two products that can be bought individually. Uh, and with these two products, Smart Mounting and Smart Wiring, Aplan addresses the pains I just showed to you and mentioned. Uh, smart Mounting supports thereby the assembly of yeah, rails and ducts, as well as electrical components. And yeah, based on this, Smart Wiring then supports the worker with all the connections in the panel, whether we are speaking about wires, cable, or even some tubes. And yeah, one last slide uh, before we jump into uh, the light demonstration is um, why it is so important that we have here an integrated solution and uh, yeah, really one infrastructure for those uh, two products. Um, therefore, we have a really high data continuity. For the engineering, that means you have just one data interface, so only one time the export of the digital twin, that's one button and pro panel, uh, to uh, shift over the complete data required in the production. And then you have their one database located on server uh, that fills uh, both applications. Uh, for the worker, it's also really great because they have just one simple and consistent user interface. Um, training is really short and therefore it's also lower training costs um, because you only need to learn about one application. And this is so easy that we have a lot of people that are completely ramped up uh, after 30 to 40 minutes with all the functionality of the application. Um, which is also important if you want to train new people for your production. Uh, for the production management, um, to have your one integrated solution also means to have an overall view about all the production orders, uh, having a yeah, combined dashboard for all the applications and one report for the complete order, uh, showing the complete status of the order and not something individually for each process step. And uh, yeah, also for the IT department, uh, it's great regarding uh, the maintenance expenditures. Um, here we have only one uh, server installation for all the applications and all the different workstations, as you know, I will show in just a minute, uh, just those applications. So we really easy to maintain and to set up. So yeah, I think we can already jump into uh, the live demonstration. Yeah, you know, let me let me make a comment on this um, from feedback that I got whenever we were at Rockwell Automation Fair is uh, someone mentioned to me and I, I won't say who it is, but uh, they said one thing that they've really that that they've been able to do because of the lack of skilled labor is that they've been able to bring someone in and train them that has really no knowledge or any kind of experience and and within about a month and a half or two months they can get them up and running training them from zero in order to get them started because they're using e-plan to train them along the way and to get them in the right place it's crazy 
Yeah, we, I have uh, also a great example of the customer from the Netherlands we are working closely together with. Um, they had really high problem in their production during the pandemic because they had really lack of uh, yeah any worker in the production. A lot of people were sick and didn't come to work. Mm -hmm. And on the other side, all the hairdressers was closing down. And uh, then they decided uh, to speak with them. And a lot of the hairdressers was really happy to get the chance to work uh, during the pandemic. And yeah, after 30 to 60 minutes, more or less all of them was able to work uh, productive in their panel production. Maybe not on the most complex ones, but uh, at least they was all productively working. And the funny thing here is that the quality in the end was sometimes even better than uh, by the uh, experience guide because they was really following one by one the instructions and they was all created in a really standardized uh, way. So that was a great success for the workers and the company as well. Yeah, Pat, you probably run into a little bit of that too, right? Where some of your clients are, are, are dealing with the same pain point. Oh, definitely. Uh, the, the labor force is, is driving a lot of their interest in in more manufacturing automation today. Um, in fact, I have I had one customer uh, in a previous uh, territory that uh, uh, his facility was right across from a high school. And so he would get, during the day, he'd get uh, people in that had students at the high school to do work. And then in the evening, he was able to bring some of the students in uh, themselves for four hours to to do some of this stuff, and it was it was that um, it was easy enough for them to be productive. That's also That's a great weird. example. <laughs> okay, so yeah, to 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 start with the live demonstration. Um, uh, here is what the user sees um, when he um, yeah, first open up uh, the application. And what you can see here is I'm just using a normal Google Chrome browser and I just uh, log into the server and I directly come to here yeah, a login page. So I will quickly log in here. And uh, what I see first is um, uh, yeah, an order list. Um, that opens up to me, and uh, this is really centrally managed by the production preparation department, and the sentry is stored on a server. So, if you assume the production preparation has created this order order and has put up the data, uh, the data is up to date and accessible for everybody in the production just from their workstations. And all these orders are directly based on the digital twin created in ProPanel, which allows to offer really an unbeatable depth of data and yeah, also saves the engineering efforts because now all the model views you will see in a second are created uh, automatically just by the software. So uh, I will yeah quickly open up here one of our demonstration uh, orders for today. And um, what you see here next is an overview of the entire process to perform uh, with regards to the manual steps in the production. So really step-by-step -step, smart mounting guides here the worker through the mounting of the rails, the cable ducts, the electronical components, and shows where which component must be placed. And this is then forwarded by a 3D visualization. So even the less experienced workers, for example, the students uh, just mentioned directly know where the which component has to place and how this component has to be placed. And yeah, what we can also see is that the last point here is are uh, the connections uh, will which will be then the smart wiring in the end. So the core elements of the worker guidance are uh, yeah the checklist um, on the left side with all the work instructions and in respective of yeah the pro, uh, production step and then combined with the associated 3D visualization. So if I click here on yeah for example this uh, wire duct in the top directly the white wire duct is indicated in the graphic um, and I know okay where to mount this wire duct. 
And therefore, the worker sees all the relevant information for this production step at a glance and saves time uh, for yeah, browsing through the documentation. Normally, this, doc uh, this information would be yeah, split it over multiple pages in the documentation. On one page, you have the model view. On the next page, you maybe see which material you need to use and so on. And here, you really see everything at the same time. Um, and um, yeah, you can then, for example, even indicate here, for example, the drilling holes uh, to orientate on the mounting plate. Okay, I need this four drilling holes or five drilling holes to cover with the white duct. Okay, I need to know where to place it. Or if you don't have uh, pre drilled, you can even show in the dimensions to get additional information uh, where to mount the components. And what I really like here is that you are not overwhelmed as a worker with all the different dimensions possible for this model view. You're just seeing the numbers you really know, need to know for this uh, respective production step. And uh, I think that's also yeah, helping not get distracted by any other numbers. Uh, and there's no misunderstanding, misreading. You have a clear idea about uh, which uh, measurement is important for you right now. Keep it simple, right? Yeah. And uh, drill it down to what you really need. Uh, need. So, um, as you can see here on the right side of this table, uh, we have also the starters for each uh, work step. And this is what the checklist makes the checklist to a checklist. Uh, here we are ensuring that nothing is forgotten during the process and that everyone keeps track about the production process. This has multiple advantages. Um, for example, in the case of absence of somebody, somebody else can take over the job quickly and easily because you really know where this person stopped and you don't need to scroll through the model views or the documentation to see Oh, this was already checkmarked and this was not, so maybe I need to start there. Now it's directly clear for everybody. And um, by having this status and this process uh, also for the production um, uh, manager, it's uh, good to see the status of the overall project. Uh, so if the respective uh, yeah, production step is already completed or close to be completed, or if there are maybe um, yeah, some additional resources needed to uh, match the final deadline coming by the customer. And uh, then he can even split the work to two people, for example. One person is, for example, working on the door, the other one is working on the mounting plate, and they can work in parallel on one order with uh, our yeah, multi-mode uh, that enables uh, even working with multiple people on one order. And um, yeah, if you are then uh, done with all the um, different um, yeah, me uh, mechanical parts, so all the wire ducts, um, all the mounting rails, maybe you have also some SPS uh, rails or EMV grids or something like this. Um, this will be all shown here and you can all mount all this. Um, and then you would jump to the next uh, process step, the electronical components. And in smart mounting, the worker um, then yeah, see or receives the same detailed assistance also uh, for the components. So here we have also a compass view with a, a product type, the manufacturer, um, the description about this part. And the cool thing is that you cannot even yeah, sort and filter here. You can also search for some uh, components. So normally, if uh, I would build uh, this mounting plate, I would start uh, to um, yeah, mount maybe uh, yeah, all the Siemens uh, motor starters here. So I would quickly search for the motor starter. And uh, the 3D visualization is um, filtered or on uh, what I'm just searching for. And here in the list, I see all the motor starters to get my box with the motor starters first and mount them uh, step by step. And then I can yeah, click on the first one. Uh, it's directly indicated here in the graphic. 
uh, I know where to place this and yeah, I can even get additional information about this. Uh, so, for example, if um, yeah, all this compass view and all the details are not enough for me, I can quickly jump to the interactive schematic page here and to get additional information uh, out of the schematic page, maybe a, a setting value uh, or something else I would just like to double check. In the most cases I hear from my customers that it's not really necessary for them but at least it's a fallback option for you to get this information. And um, another cool thing uh, we enabled with Smart Mounting is also to jump here to the ePlan Data Portal. And then you can also see here in the ePlan Data Portal additional information about the component. But even if you need more information than this, you can also um, insert additional documents as a link here and open them up uh, during a note section, which, which would pop up if you have some additional links here. You know, visually, this is just laid out so well, and it's so easy to look at it. And what it reminds me of is, is whenever you go to an engineer's garage and you look in their garage and they have everything placed, you know, perfectly, and they, they have all of their tools are the same brand, and they're equally spaced apart and it's all like perfectly and that's what this reminds me of mm -hmm. it makes it visually just so easy to work yeah it makes it easy and it also makes it fun because having a digital and cool looking workplace is also yeah another important point to get new people for your production being an attractive in your workplace definitely helps here let me ask, uh, there's a question that, that I just got. Uh, does the customer need multiple license in order to have multiple assemblers working on the same project? So um, the deal with the license is that you need uh, one license for each worker. Um, and uh, that makes no difference if they're working on the same project or uh, if uh, they're working um, on different projects. It just comes down to the different workplaces, so it's one license per workplace. Okay. And uh, yeah, we we also spoke about the communication here. So um, I said in the beginning that it's right now quite difficult to communicate anything back to the engineering if yeah there's some errors identified or some change would be requested. And therefore, we have now here the commenting field. So for each work step, you can create a comment and yeah, type here uh, text, but even add an additional screenshot or maybe attach a photo um, if you want to communicate any change back uh, to the engineering. So for example, if you use an alternative component because one material wasn't available, you can just take a photo of the alternative com uh, component and communicate this photo back to the engineering that they know, oh, okay, this uh, device with this type plate was used so I can directly exchange it in the as built documentation. And yeah, this information is then stored in the, uh, uh, in the production order and can be directly also communicated uh, back to the engineering department via email. So here we'll just quickly save it and you can also see this indication that it's now saved and visible for other people as well. And uh, if there's yeah any bigger things, um, bigger errors found, would need to be clarified, for example, with the manager first, um, task can also be blocked that nobody else is uh, keep working on uh, this task before it's clarified with uh, the management. Um, so, if we are now, um, yeah, keep working on this order and um, putting everything uh, to green and doing step by step, it always can happen that uh, there are coming any changes to the assembly of, uh, um, yeah, during the assembly of the uh, panel. So, for example, yeah, customer requirements can change again, or there are some errors found in the documentation. But yeah, what almost no project spares out right now is that some components are just not available during the production. 
considering uh, any panel productions facing this issue at the moment that they need to use alternative components or uh, they need to yeah, even do a redesign of the panel, even if it's already in the production, just because the material is not available. And this is where our solution can really show its strengths um, because we not only display the information from the project, we can really interpret the data of the project. Um, so after the engineering did the change, uh, it's really important to yeah, quickly communicate uh, the change to all the uh, people working on the project. Um, that the uh, yeah, effort for the modification remains as low as possible. And uh, here already the software helps really great because we have the central server and uh, if you upload the new data here, it's shared with everybody. So finally, no more copies that have to be exchanged manually at the different workplaces, uh, not giving out some paper and making sure that they are not working with the old paper copy. Um, but now they have the new documentation. And uh, for the worker, it's somehow tricky to find out what the, the difference between the version one and the version two or version three. And to compare them manually will yeah, it's normally a few hundred pages. It's quite time consuming. And it's also a high danger of uh, missing out some differences that are in the documentation. So what our software does here is that they automatically uh, scan uh, the different versions for any changes and uh, adjust the checklist accordingly. So the employee now sees in the overview which components have to be mounted additionally, which have to be removed, and uh, which have to be placed at a different position. Therefore, um, we have here in the administration view uh, a possibility to uh, manage the orders. Um, and uh, what uh, the yeah, shop floor uh, manager would now do is that he would update um, oops, this order here. Ah, okay, I just informed uh, that I'm right now working on this order, so I will quickly close this. Um, so now I can update the order with some new data I got from the engineering. Um, and this will just yeah take a few seconds uh, until the uh, new data and the comparison is available. So lucky you, I already prepared this. <laughs> Good and, job, uh, I like that. <laughs> and how it look, uh, looks like now is um, that you still see here, um, yeah, the status about what we have already mounted and what don't need to be changed. So everything that is already mounted and don't need to be uh, uh, changed is already green. And uh, we see here, oh yeah, for example, um, this one, or let me search, uh, search for the motor starters we have all just mounted. Open up. So uh, we see some uh, elements with this blue icon here. And that means, okay, this component is already mounted, but uh, it needs to be dismounted again because it's not uh, part of the updated project file any longer. Oh, I was a little bit too quick. Check. Okay, for example, this part needs to be dismounted again. And um, in the end of this list, you can also see a few elements uh, that are not green yet because they are uh, not mounted and they come additionally to the project and need to be mounted now in addition to uh, what we already had. So the blue where it shows the blue with the with the circle and the arrow uh, up above. If I'm looking at this progress and it says 150 out of 171, this is counted as not being completed yet. Correct. So that would be 1 of the 21 um yes. the 21 things that are left to do correct yeah that, that, okay. that's one that's an open task and this is an open task yeah. and the mm -hmm. green ones are the one that i already completed right. so okay yeah always, i just wanted to make sure that it was counted that way as a task mm -hmm. that still needed to be completed on there okay cool okay so well yeah go back to the other order we 
started working on. Um, but it's really cool to have this comparison because yeah, you directly know what to do uh, without scanning any documentation. And this shortens the response time to the uh, changes and really simplify also the communication uh, by giving real guidance to uh, the actual change. So there was one task left um, uh, on this order. So we started with the mechanical parts. We did something about the electronical parts and also the changes here. And the last one uh, would be now uh, the wiring part. And therefore we have smart wiring as our digital assistant for all the connections inside the panel. So as I said, the wires, the cable, uh, cables, the wire jumpers, and even tubes inside. And uh, the cool thing is that uh, we are here not only showing the wires, but by showing the wires inside the cabinet, we are having really the exact lane path. So if you uh, are working with prefabricated wires or cables in the production, um, it really helps you to know where to mount this wire in the way that the prefabricated wire is uh, having also the right length. So for example, I'll quickly select one here. Um, maybe for this one, it's quite easy uh, that you know the lane path where to mount this wire. But if you have something going from up here to down here, it's critical if you're going this way or this way, and only for one way the prefabricated wire is um, yeah, fitting and otherwise you need to rework on the wires uh, again and you don't know the documentation where exactly this wire is, uh, which is also an issue for service later on. So um, for the wiring, um, you can yeah, here use the different uh, functions to zoom in on the start point or the end point that you exactly see uh, which clamp um, you need to mount uh, the wire. Um, here you again see the length, the material that used, how you need to um, a a funnel the end of the terminal. Um, and of course, here you can also jump to the schematics and having yeah, all the functionalities you just saw for the mounting, uh, uh, the mounting part. Uh, something additional we have here, which is really cool, uh, is uh, the integration of um, the data coming from the wire terminal. So if you look here again on the order list, it's possible to add the wire terminal file coming from the Vital uh, wire terminal to create all these prefabricated wires. And uh, what we are showing here is uh, the information in which bundle this uh, wire can be found. And if you're working here with the magazines, it's even saying, Oh, which magazine um, the wire is in and it, at uh, which position in the magazine the wire is. So I would uh, then select here magazine one, for example, and then I can work uh, wire by wire and don't even need to look at the wire. I directly know which wire it is. And uh, yeah, here uh, we have also some options to print, for example, the label. Uh, or to do even more communication with other virtual machines like the wire station, for example. Yeah, I don't know if you know this. Uh, and by the way, there, there's a question in the chat that um, that Pat, if if you want to look at that, um, I don't know. I don't even know where to start with it. So uh, and and to be as you can look and. And in, uh, in a second, we're going to answer some more questions right now going through smart wiring. But when we went to Rockwell automations automation fair, just a couple months ago, we had a wiring station and we're using smart wiring. We did a contest to see <laughs> how long it would take someone to use smart wiring. And uh, wire to, to, to do 3 wires, it was 3 wires and that's. Guess. The fastest time, which was, by the way, faster than Cruno could do it. But guess the fastest time for three wires. Three wires. Three minutes. Did you yes. said three? Three. Uh, two minutes thirty. Less than thirty seconds. What? Yeah. 
Someone came in and did it in less than 30 seconds. Imagine that. That's and how crazy. long does it take without using smart wiring? Well, for me, it takes at least three minutes to find the right page where I can find the wire. <laughs> <laughs> so there you go. <laughs> but we thought it was pretty amazing. And uh, and like I said, Kruno tried to 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 match that that time and uh, couldn't quite do it. So, yeah, the average uh, Alessandro said it's average three minutes per wire. So to come in and do it that fast was we we were we were all kind of blown away. We have this this contest that we're doing and not knowing how fast it would be and it coming in at that that time, we just it was amazing. It was really, really cool to watch that happen. Yeah. I hope you got yeah. a video. <laughs> and not and not it didn't include the wire preparation, just like Alessandro said. But yeah, just the 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 mounting portion that portion of it. But yeah. So it was pretty awesome. Oh. Yeah, to uh, finish uh, my demonstration, and then I think we can answer a lot of more of the questions. Uh, the last step after all the mounting and the wiring of the panel uh, would be then the checking. And therefore, you can activate here a check mode inside of smart wiring. Um, important is that we are here not doing a functional test of um, the um, uh, panel, but we can do a connect a uh, connection test of all the connections uh, mounted in the uh, panel, and therefore you see all the connections that have been already mounted here in the list, and you can uh, during the testing say here, okay, this one passed the testing, uh, this one passed the testing, this one maybe not passed the testing, and it will be again go back to the smart wiring and the worker working with smart wiring. Uh, that he sees, okay, there's some rework needed to be done on this wire, and that you uh, get an overview about what needs to be reworked after the testing. And uh, yeah, if you are then completely done or any time during this process, you can also export uh, here a status report um, uh, of your uh, of this production order to get all the information outside for your documentation, for example. And yeah, I could show much more uh, on the application. There are a lot of smaller but really cool functionalities that I've not shown uh, uh, today yet. Uh, so, for example, you can also uh, having yeah, have some flexibility here in the columns and then the, the data shown. So you can extend the columns with additional data if you require something else for your production. We have really uh, unbeatable depths of data here coming from the original project. And yeah, also other interfaces to other retard solutions for the production. But it sounds uh, like maybe we spend some time on some questions as well. Yeah, it sounds like you're leveraging yourself to come back on to Open Line Friday. That you're saying <laughs> that you're not going to give all the information because you're 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 wanting to come back and do this again. <laughs> Well, we can do it the next time, two or three hours. I can talk the whole day about the application. <laughs> oh man, on a Friday, I don't know if you want to give up again. You're you're approaching eight o'clock in Germany right now. I don't know if you want to give up all your time like that. Uh, if you could, I don't know if you saw that we we had a, a a pretty extensive question or a few questions that came to us as panelists. So I, I don't know if you had a chance to to look over that or yes, and can can address those, Pat. Yeah, so it's a it's a lengthy one. So Tobias, what you showed was basically the 2023 platform, correct? Okay, so the the question has has to do with I think um, use not usability um, the user interface on 2023 mm -hmm. and how uh, project data uh, is loaded uh, into the application depending upon what time um, the user in the, I guess he's got roles defined in here. Um, so yeah, if you can read it, you're probably gonna understand it more than I can. Mm -hmm. ben. It, it look, it, it's right here for me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, so, uh... Well, I'm actually not the right guy to uh, give an update presentation for the latest 2023 platform release, but
But uh, regarding the user interface, you can see here in the version 2023 of Smart Wiring and Smart Mounting. Um, uh, yeah, you can use the interface as it is right now, but there are a lot of options to uh, adjust it to your requirements as well. So if you're thinking about, for example, color coding, you yeah, can give it a completely different look and feel. You can do it in white and uh, red if you like the traditional colors uh, of smart wiring, what we had before. Uh, you can add here additional information with different color regimes, for example. So if there's any um, yeah, request from your site to show uh, new colors or um, to show um, uh, additional information, that, that should be definitely possible. And if you're uh, reaching any limits here, feel free to also reach out uh, to me directly or yeah, to your salesperson in the US and we will see if we can do there some additional optimization. And regarding the project, uh, how to load the project data, I can quickly share my screen again. Um, so it's, uh, as I said, one export uh, we have in ProPanel um, and by one click, and then you have uh, here for creating an order, you can just select the EPDZ file um, or, or select one EPDZ file from the server, give the order name, two, three, and uh, you can directly uh, yeah, load um, uh, load uh, the new order, so I can just select anything here and say create order. Oh, this order already exists. Um, and then the order is created and directly available for all workstations. Um, and uh, regarding the user settings and the user interface, so for example, I can also switch here to a light mode to have it more on the traditional looking as it was before. Anybody have any else other questions, please leave them in the chat. Um, and Ben said that he would follow up with you, uh, Tobias. So <clears throat> you, you, oh, you quite a long yeah. question. Maybe I didn't cover all of that. No, but what yeah, I'll do is quite a few. Afterwards. <laughs> yeah, I'll send I'll send you the full question so that you can that you can see it. But yeah, uh, Ben will follow up with you for sure. Pat, I don't know if you have any other questions or anything that you no. wanted to bring up with that as well. I think I think once again, from what I said initially, the the power of the the digital twin digital prototype really lends itself to driving all this types of automation onto the manufacturing floor. And then, you know, what you can also what you also have the capability of is, especially in today's world, you know, where you're starting to actually do partial builds because of component delivery availability. This really lends itself to keeping track of the work you've completed and what you have left to do. So there's just an enormous amount of value in creating that digital twin. Because without that, you don't have this to start with. Yeah, Pat, you, you've seen an evolution of things over since you started doing this, but, but since you became an electrical engineer. I mean, the what you started with whenever you first were in this craft. And what we have now, it's really like we got the jetpack. <laughs> we yeah. talk about we Definitely. wanted the jetpack after all these years. We're getting the jetpack. This for everybody is the jetpack. Yes, it is. Cool. Well, it looks like the, that those are all our questions right now. So if you have any other follow up questions, you can reach out to uh, Tobias or Pat or myself. We'd love to help you with that. This is going to be available on YouTube in the next couple of days. I'll have a chance to upload it to YouTube and, um, and we'll have uh, everything that, that we talked about on this episode, of course, with the recording, but also some more information for you. If uh, you wanna know where to be directed, I can put you on the right pages on our website with smart mounting and smart wiring uh, so thanks guys. I appreciate you coming on the first webcast of 2023 on Friday, the 13th, and it went fantastic. No problems at all. Great. Thank you, everybody.
Thank you. Thank you for your time and looking forward to hear from you. Yeah, I, I appreciate you guys. And I know that Tobias that you want to come and 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 come and hang out in the States and come visit somebody with me. So we'll we'll talk soon about how we can get you over here. We'll do something in person, okay? Sounds great. Looking All right, forward. Thanks so much. Have a great weekend, Pat. Have a great weekend. Take care, everybody. Thank you. Bye.